and in particular on the yeah for the physics side they were important for formulating the standard model on the math side that led to the uh, formulation of, of Donaldson invariance which distinguished the, the smooth structure and of, of course as, as we know and um, this led to a very kind of fruitful interaction between the, the subjects um, so for these um, uh, lectures um, I was planning to, to review a bit the historic uh, story, um, starting with, which goes back to the, the work of, of Witten and uh, the computation of Donaldson invariance by Alex uh, Gertz and um, uh, on for rational surfaces. And if you want to reproduce these, these, uh, these Donaldson invariants for rep rational surfaces, in fact, it turned out that you have to understand the theory uh, very well. You need to uh, use the full cyborg Witten uh, solution. And then um, uh, using that, that full solution, you can evaluate the so-called U-plane uh, integral, all which I will explain in, in more detail. And there are some more uh, recent works, which I uh, will uh, touch upon, hopefully, tomorrow in the, in the lecture tomorrow. Um, so please interrupt with any, any questions. I don't, I'm not quite familiar with everybody's uh, background, so if there are any questions, uh, let me know. And so I'd like to uh, start uh, the story with uh, the physical theory in, in flat space and then work towards the theory in, uh, in, in, on, a, on a compact four manifold and set up this, uh, this uh, so-called U-plane uh, integral. And as uh, Professor Nakajima mentioned, the U-plane is essentially the, the Coulomb branch for SU2 uh, cyborg uh, Witten uh, theory. Okay. So we are considering pure SU2 uh, cyber grid and uh, theory. And this uh, pure means that we only consider the, the, the vector multiplet. We don't add any, any matter. And the field content uh, con then consists of a, of a gauge potential A mu. Um, uh, together with a, a scalar field, a complex scalar field phi. Um, and two uh, well fermions, which are psi and lambda, and then lambda bar and, uh, and psi bar. Um, so this is a complex, so we have a phi and we have a phi bar. And um, let me also mention the, the representation of these fields under the, the global symmetry group. Let me remove the references. The global uh, symmetry uh, group, which is SU uh, to L times SU uh, to R. It forms the, the SO4 uh, rotation group. And um, then there is an, an R symmetry group. It's a bit inconvenient um, terminology, maybe. Let me denote it by SU2I. Um, and there's also a U1, um, let me call it. All right. So this, this part of the global symmetry is just because we have uh, cyber written theory has n equals to 2 uh, SUSI. And therefore, you can rotate the two supersymmetries, in a sense, into each other, which leads to this. Uh, um, to this global symmetry group. And if we add the, the quantum numbers here uh, for these, these fields, we get the following representations, one half, one half, uh, zero, and a charge zero under the, the U1 group. And for the phi, we get, they are trivial representations for the, the rotation group. So we have zero, 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 and a two for the, the holomorphic field and zero, 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 and minus two for the anti-holomorphic field. And for the fermions, we get one half, zero, uh, one half for the two uh, chiral fermions, uh, plus uh, zero, one half, one half, um, minus one for the anti-chiral fermions. Any questions 
so far. Um, and the, the supersymmetry uh, charges of the theory, they transform in this, the same way as the, as the fermions, so they have the same uh, representations as, as this. Um, okay, so this uh, theory comes with a, with a potential which we aim to, uh, to minimize, one over the coupling squared. And so the, all these fields are valued in the, the Lie algebra of, uh, of SU2. We get a potential trace of uh, phi, the commutator phi x and phi, phi bar x uh, squared. Um, And we um, aim to minimize this, uh, this, this potential to have the, the vacuum model space of this, this theory. And so in particular, this means that we, that phi and phi bar commute, that implies that they are valued in the carton of the, of the, of the SU2 uh, gates, uh, gates group. And uh, therefore, and then using the gates transformation, we can set phi equal to one half times A times uh, sigma times the Pauli, third Pauli matrix is one half a times one zero zero minus one. So a is a a is a, a complex a complex number, and for all these and for this in a sense uh, parameter space, the the potential will uh, will vanish, and we are at the, at least the classical uh, vacuum space of this uh, this field. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay, so in order to parameterize the, the vacuum um, modelized space, we want a, a gates invariant uh, combination. So we take the a quantity that is proportional to the trace over phi squared. Um, and so if this, this parameterization, this would uh, go as one, of one half times, uh, times a squared. And this is what we call, uh, what we denote by, by u, and so the, the, the space where, where u lives is the, is the u plane. Okay. So this is valued then in the, in the u plane. So this, this A has in fact, uh, so here it, it just appears as a, as a parameter and it seems directly related to, uh, to U. Um, if we, this is a, in a sense a weak coupling um, relation between the two. Um, A has a more independent interpretation uh, if we consider uh, BPS states and their central charges. Um, since the electric magnetic charges of the theory, so the electric charges, once, once we have turned on a non-vanishing uh, A, we have broken the SU2 gates group down to, uh, down to U1, and uh, therefore we have kind of one uh, set of integers gives us electric charge, and one set of integers gives us uh, magnetic charge. And so this is under the under unbroken U1 in SU2 on the on the Coulomb branch where this where U is uh, is non -vanishing. Okay, so these are two actually two integers which are um, it's in principle can take any any value and. Uh, we have the notion of a, of a central charge or a complexified mass. Um, which is then A times um, NE um, plus NM times uh, AD. Sorry, I've, let me put the N on the left side also. NE times, times A. Um, okay. And at, at weak coupling, uh, 
where uh, g is, is, is very, uh, very small, uh, we have that AD is goes approximately like the complexified coupling tau times, uh, times A. So tau is, um, let me say, theta divided by 2 pi plus um, I over uh, G squared. There are some, maybe some non-trivial factors here. Um, I don't know them from the, the top of my head, but it's a, it, this is a, the tau is a complexified version of the, this coupling uh, constant. Um, and we see it is always valued in the upper half uh, plane because H is, uh, is already positive, because G is, is positive. And in fact, this uh, tau and a, uh, due to the the RG flow of the theory, are also completely are also determined by by u. Um, so we have that uh, that a d, in fact, reads um, i over pi times the square root of two times u times the logarithm of u, um, and that a. Um, basically corresponds to the square root of u divided by, by 2, which then uh, kind of, um, reproduces that, uh, that, that relation. Okay, so this is, this is at, at the, these are the, you should view these as the leading terms at the, the weak, uh, at the weak coupling, uh, both terms get an infinite uh, number of, um, um, of corrections, which call us inverse powers in, uh, in U. So the, the cyber uh solution uh, one could say is the is the solution to know all these the infinite uh, corrections to these uh, to these parameters, um, or you could say say differently. So the cyber uh solution gives gives a of of u and um, a d of u, um, and we have the relation that that tau, in fact, is is by definition the derivative of a d uh, to a. So we know uh, tau as function of of u. Or at least the, the series um, expansion. And we can also um, invert this and express u as function of, of tau. First a relation where we get uh, u, u tau um, is 1 over 8 times q to the minus 1 over uh, 4 uh, plus uh, series in, in Q, uh, where Q is e to the 2 pi i times times tau. Okay. Um, okay, so, so I, don't, I won't go into too much detail here, but Cyber can written, I can explain that both A and AD, you should view them as a, as a period of a one form over an elliptic curve. Um, but yeah, for our purposes of evaluating the U-plane integral, and since this is uh, for now for now enough, and I will give some more details, um, I guess by by tomorrow. Uh, we can in include, if you want to work with the dimension full parameters, then U has a dimension of the scale uh, squared, so we can in, 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 in involve the, the scale uh, lambda. Uh, lambda. 
aerodynamical. So we can make a, um, a drawing of the, of the U-plane, given the, the solution. And it looks uh, roughly uh, like this. We have one, uh, the weak coupling uh, singularity, which I already mentioned, um, I infinity. Um, then you might think that there will be a point in the interior where U is equal to zero. But it turns out that if you include all the non-perturbative effects, there is no special point with uh, with u is equal to zero, with our two special points where u is uh, minus lambda squared and u is lambda squared, um, two singular points where a mass, uh, where either a monopole becomes massless or a dion becomes massless. So with weak coupling, the monopoles and dions are these very heavy objects, but um, if you go to strong coupling, it turns out that they can be, be massless. Um, and these two points uh, correspond um, uh, they correspond in terms of the, the coupling constant to tau is equal to uh, 2, I think it's this one, and this is tau is equal to, uh, to 0. Okay. Um, yeah, and there's a so-called wall of marginal stability, which is across which BPS states uh, decay. It's not so, not so important for, our, for us, um, but for us these, these three points, u is plus or minus uh, lambda squared, and uh, u is infinity, i infinity are the, the kind of the, the, the special points of the, of the u-plane uh, or the, the columbrans of this uh, theory. Okay, any, any questions so far? Okay, so this is the, the theory in, in flat space. Um, uh, maybe one thing I should, before going to topological twisting, I should add. So I defined U as the, um, as a trace of, uh, of phi squared. If you go to the quantum theory, I should really um, define this as a, as a correlation function of the quantum theory. And um, since this was the theory in, in flat space, this was a, um, a correlation function in, in R4. So we would like to, to formulate this, uh, this theory on a, on a compact manifold. Um, and, in order, and in order to have the power to evaluate, in fact, uh, partition functions and correlation functions, we want to preserve some of the, the supersymmetries. And for this, we will need to uh, apply a technique called uh, topological twisting um, so to uh, formulate. theory on compact um, for manifold M topologically uh, twist. Okay. And so what is yeah, basically, wh why we need the topological twist is because these uh, supersymmetry generators, they transformed as the, the fermions. They all transformed in, a, in representations which had a more than one dimension. Um, and we want to have a, have a scalar, um, at least some of the supersymmetry transforming in a scalar representation or a one-dimensional uh, representation. So to this end, we, will, we need to identify an isomorphism between the SU2 R symmetry and an SU2 inside the rotation group. Um, which practically then basically says that you need to take the, the representations of the um, um, of a diagonal group of say SU2R times of the SU2R group times say one of the components of the 
one of the IG2 components of the, the rotation group. Um, okay. So the new representations we, we get for the fields and there. So as you to L times as you to R uh, prime um, are as follows. A, the gauge potential A mu remains um, a vector, so it still transforms uh, with the four-dimensional uh, representation. Uh, phi and phi bar, uh, they remain uh, scalars, so they, they still transform with the, uh, the one-dimensional representation quantum numbers uh, zero. And then lambda uh, psi, lambda bar, psi bar, um, they, they do change and they transform now as follows. Uh, one is the, the trivial representation and a um, three-dimensional representation um, and a uh, four-dimensional representation. Okay. okay, so basically you take the diagonal of the, the previous SU2 of the previous SU2R group and the SU2I. And, and then if you do the look at the, the representations, you find these this new representation for this uh, SU2 R prime, which is the diagonal of the, these previous two, two groups. Okay, so we, we give these, these uh, three terms, they'll uh, represent a different uh, fermionic field. Uh, the trivial one is a, a Grassmann valued uh, zero form. Maybe let me put it on, on this side. Eta Grassmann valued uh, zero form. Uh, then the middle term, uh, zero one, is um, um, so that was actually chi is a self dual, is also Grassmann valued because it comes from a, from a fermion, and then it's a self dual uh, two form. And uh, the last term is a, is a vector. So I could maybe, maybe let me write the indices explicitly. Chi mu nu, dx mu, what's dx mu. And then we have a vector psi mu, dx mu is a, a Grassmann valued. So since we have this uh, one, this, this trivial representation, we also have a, a scalar supercharge. Uh, Q, uh, which, uh, which squares to zero, which is uh, nilpotent. just uh, maybe list how, did, how it acts on A and, uh, and phi. So Q acting on A mu uh, gives us uh, psi mu. Uh, Q acting on the holomorphic scalar field gives us zero. And uh, Q acting on the anti-holomorphic uh, scalar field is proportional to um, to the to eta to the to the uh, zero form. Okay. 
So since it, it squares to, to zero, um, if this is a BRST, Q is a BRST type uh, symmetry. Um, and for that reason, basically all the uh, observables in the, the theory will fall into uh, to free classes. Um, classes of observables, but namely those which are uh, which are not annihilated by by Q. Um, I represent the generic observable by uh, curly O. So the first class is those uh, for which uh, Q acting on O is not equal to uh, to zero. They don't pay so much over overall for us. Um, then we have the so-called exact observables. Um, O, and those are the observables which can write write as the Q uh, acting on some uh, different observable uh, W. Or some W. And then the third class are the, the closed ones, namely those which are annihilated by Q, but are not, uh, not exact. Um, so these are the O observables which are in the kernel of Q, um, um, but they are not in the image of, uh, of Q. Okay. Um, okay. Now this, this Q is a, is a global symmetry and uh, there is a famous uh, statement quantum field theory, the Ward-Takasi identity, that the, uh, the correlation functions of a Q exact, uh, Q exact observable, they should in fact be, uh, be zero. So if we did a, determine the, the correlation function of Q, uh, W, a Q exact observable, let me write it on the, the left hand side, although this may be not, not well defined, but on the right on the right hand side we get a, a path integral uh, dx physically uh, with the insertion of this uh, this operator e to the minus s and x, where x represents all the, the fields of the of the theory. Um, the very uh, general statement in, in quantum field theory, uh, this is equal to uh, to zero. And it in particular says that Q, Q exact observables uh, decouple from the uh, Q closed ones. If you would add a number of Q closed ones here, um, then it would still be zero because you could uh, bring them into the, the bracket because Q uh, is Q acting on those, uh, those, those vanishes. Right. Um, so maybe uh, tomorrow I will uh, explain that um, that yeah, in the topologically, topologically twisted uh, cybrick witten theory, we found observables for which uh, this did not appear to be, be true. We found Q-exact observables which seemed to uh, diverge, in fact, or be infinity rather than, than zero. And um, we needed to develop a new uh, regularization and renormalization uh, to demonstrate that it actually does uh, evaluate to, to zero and, and therefore in a sense this uh, confirms again this uh, um, this general uh, this general um, statement in, in quantum field theory. Okay, so that that was the um, the result of a paper from, from January uh, this year. Um, okay, but I before being able to, to explain that, I need to introduce a few more, uh, few more things. So this is now quite a, a general 
uh, statement for topological theories that you always that you have a Q a BRST type uh, fermionic symmetry, your uh, observables then fall into these uh, these three uh, three classes, um, and now in our topological uh, gates theory, the the Lagrangian uh, basically takes uh, the following form: this i over um, eight pi some numerical factor times the our complexified coupling constant uh, tau times a trace of f red f, and um, and then the rest of the action is uh, is q exact. So this is the q of some q acting on some w for some specific uh, w. In the particular, since this is a topological term, there is no metric dependence in in this term. All the metric dependence is in uh, the q exact. This, so the metric dependence is uh, in Q exact uh, part. Um, and for this reason, if you take the, the variation of the of a, of a physical, if, if you take the, the variation of a correlation function to the to the metric. Um, then this is equal to uh, two zero, um, and it is in fact a zero if uh, Q uh, acting on on O um, is equal to uh, to zero. Okay. So you, if you do this this variation, you basically bring down this this Q exact term, and we see for if the the Warthakasi identity that the, the Q exact observables decouple from the Q closed ones. Uh, so if, if O is um, Q closed, um, then it is independent of the, the metric. Okay. So the, the topological observables lie in the, the Q cohomology. In principle, the theory has many other observables which are, which one can very well um, evaluate, but in, they are not, uh, just not, uh, not topological. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Um, okay, so for our topological twisted uh, cyborg witten theory, also known as, as Donaldson witten theory, there are um, two observables in the Q cohomology which are particularly uh, useful. Donaldson. Uh, witten theory. Um, one is one observable. Observables are first one is O is equal to uh, two times U for some to get the orientation right actually for the matching with uh, with the, uh, with math um, we multiply this U uh, by two we uh, we had discussed that if you act with Q on um, on phi it gives uh, gives zero and since U is uh, built of of phi if you act on this you you see it is a uh, it is annihilated by, by Q. Um, and the more, more complicated one is um, O is I minus of X. Um, which is 1 over 4 pi squared integral over X, which is an um, integer uh, two cycle in the manifold. So X in H to M set. And then on the right hand side we get the, the following, we get a trace over Psi wedge Psi, 
minus 1 over the square root of 2 of phi and f. Okay, so this is a bit more, more work to demonstrate that it, it vanishes if you act with, with q. Um, uh, but it is, and, and, and yeah, there is a so-called descent mechanism which um, constructs q uh, closed observable starting from, from u, basically. But, um, I will discuss these. These, will, these are the two relevant funds for, for this talk, um, which will be relevant to um, if you if you if you, if you evaluate these these observables or these correlation functions with these uh, observables, you reproduce the, the, the invariance defined by by Donaldson. So that was the claim to to fake. Um, So, I already mentioned before, we are considering a compact four manifold um, M. Let M be a compact uh, four manifold um, smooth. And so, let me say a little bit more about um, about it. Uh, there is a um, the the lattice, or maybe let me write it, the, the lattice or the two cycles, H2, um, Mz, gives naturally a rise to a lattice L, gives naturally rise to a lattice, to denote by, by L. Um, so we, we allow for the possibility of, of torsion. So this L is basically this, um, basically this this group, um, but modding out the torsion. You could say you you embed this group into H2MR, and then uh, L is the embedding of H2MZ into H2MR because in in R there will not be any any torsion. Um, And so the, the, the signature of, uh, of L is, uh, I don't know, by B2 plus, uh, B2 uh, minus. Um, and so on this lattice, we have a quadratic form. Uh, the quadratic form uh, on L is denoted by, by B. So this is L times L to, uh, to Z. And we can extend it to, um, to L times R uh, to get a form where you, um, in the, over the reals. Right, so we are in interested to evaluate the, the full path integral, let me denote it by curly z, over this, uh, this, this four manifold integral of dx, which are these uh, fields of the, of the, the cyber witten theory. And then we uh, integrate, uh, we multiply it by the exponentiated action integral over m of the Lagrangian L. And once we put it on a compact manifold, it turns out there are some, uh, some curvature couplings, which I denote by nu of um, u. So these are some uh, curvature couplings, which you don't see in the Lagrangian of the of cyber witten theory on, on flat space. But once you go to, the, to a compact manifold, they uh, become important. 
Um, and it turns out that this, um, so we do this integral, we do a path integral on a compact uh, manifold. And what is a bit different from doing it the integral over a compact manifold than doing the path integral over flat space is that we now also integrate over, um, we integrate over u because it is no longer a boundary condition at the non, in the non-compact space. Um, M is uh, compact, so we can integrate also over, over u. We integrate, there is an integral over the, over the u-plane um, uh, if we work over, over a compact uh, manifold. And so let me just uh, maybe re sketch again the, the u-plane. The u-plane um, in sense have these um, three special points, a weak, a weak coupling limit and then two strong coupling singularities. U is minus lambda squared and U is lambda squared. Um, and now this, this uh, path integral turns out has, has delta function support on these, uh, these singularities. Um, which is known as the, the Cyborg-Witten contribution to this uh, integral. So this is the <coughs> delta function. Support on U is plus or minus uh, lambda squared. And this can be completely uh, specified in terms of the Cyborg-Witten invariance, which was uh, discussed by, uh, by Lothar um, this afternoon. And, um, and then there is a, a second a contribution from the, the, the remaining non-compact part of the, the U-plane. Let me just denote it by U, a set of the, the U-plane. Okay. And this... Um, this contribution from the, the U-plane is an effective, we have an effective uh, U1 theory, as I already discussed for the, for the BPS states, because the, once you have a WEF for, for U, then you have broken the gate symmetry. So in a sense, it's now a, at least uh, the gate scope, you don't have to work with the non-abelian um, gate scope anymore. You can work with the U, U1 uh, connections. Um, okay, so the, my interest lately has been in this contribution from the from the U plane, and in fact, it does not always uh, does not always contribute. Um, so I, dis I was discussing these, the signature of the the four manifold B two plus B two minus. Now, if if B two plus is larger than uh, than one. Uh, you can show that the contribution from the U-plane is, uh, is, uh, is zero. Then set U-plane is zero uh, due to too many chi um, zero modes. So this, this field chi was a fermi, uh, fermionic uh, self-dual uh, two-form, and if B2 plus is, is larger than one, you get, uh, get too many of those, and just to the rules of the Grassmann integration will put it to, uh, to zero. Um, and so it, it does contribute for B2 uh, Z, U plane is not equal to zero for uh, B two plus uh, smaller equal uh, one. Um, although actually the the case that B two plus is equal to zero is not uh, very well well studied. So we, we will focus on the case that uh, B two plus is uh, is one. Yep. Continue with B two plus. This one. Okay. 
Um, okay, so f even for this class of, of spaces, you would figure it, it, it happens that in fact the, the cyber written contribution vanishes. Uh, then uh, you can put a, a metric with constant curvature on your manifold. This is, for example, the case for the rational surfaces. And then the full answer comes from the U-plane uh, integral. So if you want to reproduce, for example, the Donaldson invariance for the for the, the projective plane, or P1 times P1, um, then physically you need to evaluate this, uh, the U-plane integral to, um, to uh, reproduce uh, those to discuss. Um, and for, uh, um, we will also set, in fact, B2, B, B1 equal to zero, and B1 is zero. Uh, this is more for simplicity to avoid the kind of, the, to uh, avoid later the zero modes coming from the, the Psi field. In principle, you can include them. There's a paper by Mourinho and, and more. Um, but to keep things simple, we set this one equal to zero. Uh, but that is, um, I'm not in, uh, imposing that it is uh, simply connected. So there might still be torsion in, in B1, which would lead to torsion in, in, uh, um, in H, H2 as well. A, so we are aiming to de determine the full path integral of this uh, theory on the on the U plane, and there is a, in fact, very um, quite a beautiful analysis of what is actually uh, contributing to this uh, this integral, and it turns out. Let me maybe give the, the reference for this. This is the paper by Moore and written from '97 um, that the, the U plane integral. Uh, reduces to an integral over the zero modes of the fields. Integral over zero modes of the fields. So they argue this by taking a, a limit of the of the metric uh, g, sending the metric g to t squared times uh, times g, uh, and using that the theory is is topological. And then it turns out that, that only the zero modes uh, survive um, this, uh, this limit. So this, now we come pretty far in setting up this, this U-plane um, integral. Um, it takes the following uh, form. It turns out it is most naturally, or one natural way to formulate it is in terms of these uh, parameters A uh, we saw before, um, and then we get the following zero modes, we get the zero mode of the um, of the fermionic uh, zero form, the self-dual uh, two form, and there is an auxiliary field uh, D, which I haven't uh, really mentioned, but there is one um, one field to make the, the supersymmetry algebra uh, close. And then we have these the curvature couplings I mentioned uh, before. I called them uh, new of and they are more explicitly given by as follows, AU times BU power sigma e to the minus the integral M over, over the manifold M. And now we just have the, the zero mode uh, Lagrangian. So you can put all the derivatives in the fields, all the, the kinetic terms, you can put them to zero and just, just keep the, the constant terms in the, the Lagrangian. So this was what I earlier called 
view of the view. I'll notice the, the zero mode. Um, so let me see what I want to get. So maybe let me let me just give this Lagrangian. Actually, there's not so much left after you reduce to zero modes. So it, uh, it reads as follows: one over sixteen pi. And then we get tau bar. F plus the self dual part of the U1 field strength, which the self dual part of the U1 field strength, plus the holomorphic tau, which couples to the anti symmetric parts of the U1 field strength. Then there is the part of the auxiliary term, Y, um, maybe I should just call this imaginary part of tau, over 8 pi, and D, which. Um, which D, it's a self-dual real two-form. And then there is a term with the fermions, I over square root of 2, uh, 16 pi, D tau bar, D A bar, eta, chi, which F plus, plus D. Okay, so that's the, the zero about uh, Lagrangian and these factors AU, and BU, I can give them a, in a little bit more detail. They are proportional to DU, DA to the power 1 over 8. And BU is U squared minus 1 to the power 1 over, one over 8. And uh, chi and sigma are the Euler number and the, the signature of, uh, of the manifold M. So these are. Just the topological data of the, the four manifold. Right. Any, any questions? Yes. Yeah, we don't really see it. It would just be multiplied by the order of the of the torsion group, and it uh, comes out of the out of the integral. So, for for some choices of of the of signature, you are forced to have have torsion by the Roclin's theorem. So, in that sense, you could and implicitly it will be dependent on sitting in chi and, and sigma, but you don't really see it. It's, uh, Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Are there other questions? And there's one thing missing from the this expression, which is the, the sum over the, the U1 fluxes. Um, these F plus and, and F minus, so it's a, a sum over over H, H2. So the U1 fluxes. Um, so we normalized, we have normalized the field strength, so it's at 1 over 4 pi times the class of, of F um, is contained in H2 um, MZ. Okay. This is for, for SU2. Um, if you want to consider gauge group SO, SO3, which cannot be lifted to SU2, then there will be a shift by a, a half integer uh, class. Um, okay. Okay, so let me 
um, kind of write things maybe a little bit more um, explicitly, then let me, if I want to consider correlation functions, so in general I will denote them by this, this phi, and the field we put in the correlation functions I put between the, the straight brackets. Um, I mentioned that for as a free case group, you, will, you can turn on a, a Hoft flux. Um, so this, this results in this, this mu, which is then contained in um, um, say it's one half H2 MZ or lattice uh, elements which lie at one half uh, spacing in the, the lattice. Um, and we saw in the, in the zero mode uh, Lagrangian, it dependent on F plus and, and F minus. So there is a dependence on the, on the metric there. And in fact, we, we find that the, these expressions are only uh, locally, um, they're only locally constant as function of the metric. And to indicate this, this dependence, I put a, this J here, which is the period point of the, of the, the four manifold. J is period point of M. Okay. So then on the, the right hand side, um, what we, we get is the, is the following. I will write it as the following as an integral over d tau which uh, d tau bar. We saw, maybe I shouldn't have erased the zero mode Lag Lagrangian, but if you have it on your notes, you see that there is a, there was a term there which was d tau bar d a bar. And if you integrate over the fermions, the term comes down and suggests a change of variables to, to tau, which I have implemented here. Then I multiply it by the, um, the curvature couplings, but now as a function of, of tau, and the sum over fluxes, which I denote by psi mu j tau uh, tau bar. So let me just write down the expressions for these two terms, and then I will um, stop. Mu tail the tau is this uh, change of variables, but now for the holomorphic side, da d tau times nu of, of u, and then u viewed as a function of, of tau. Um, and the, the fluxes, maybe it's better to write it here. Uh, psi mu j is uh, one divided by the, the square root of the imaginary part of tau times the sum over k in the lattice plus, plus mu. So this L is, is really the, the lattice. Then there is this um, inner product between the, the flux k and the period point uh, j, uh, which is a self-dual uh, two-form uh, q um, minus k minus squared divided by two, and q bar k plus squared divided by two. All right, so that's the, the sum over, over fluxes integrating over d eta and d chi brings down this linear term in the, in the flux. And then we, we can also insert observables on this, um, in this, this integral O um, uh, to, uh, to complete the, the expression. So then we'll continue tomorrow by explicitly evaluating this, this integral using, uh, partly using the mock model of forms, uh, which also came back in the title. Thank you for your attention.